Welcome back, Zerke fans, to more... Well, back to round five, really. And we apparently are going to have a sub. Looks like Sabbath66 will be subbing in for... for Trepak, as Trepak apparently has vanished off the face of the Earth. Bit of a shame. But that is how things go sometimes. Sometimes people just cease to exist. Happens all the time, really. It's kind of odd. No, people don't know about it more, but yeah, this is one of those times. Trepak no longer is with us, I'm afraid. So we're going to be moving on to round five without Trepak. Now, granted, this actually hasn't been completely approved yet, so if it turns out to not be the case, then I guess we just watched a match that was fun. But hey, at least Sabbath is in the game, so we have a thing to watch. I'm curious how this is going to go, though. Sabbath actually hasn't had many games in, so they aren't at all tired. But Manero has been playing a little while, and that... Curious how that's going to work out. And again, we do see the split. Minero and Sabbath going for that split. They do have one area each. Spiderbots for Sabbath and Minero going for the Shieldbot Factory as they were prior. 400 going for Gunships at the top and Google Frog with the Cloakybot Factory in the effectively natural expansion. So, again, this is a potential situation where we could see Sabbath get overrun by both of their opponents right next to each other. Right off the bat, we see Blast Wings off 400, which will be a bit of a pain. I mean, Fleas coming in actually could be a complete counter to that, since they will see the Blastwings coming, but at the same time, not enough defenses in time, and they're not going to stop the Blastwings easily. They're just going to cause one of the Blastwings to run into them. That's about it. The Blastwings will still be able to get the damage they need on the Metal Extractors and the, and the Solar Plants, leaving Sabbath with far less of an economy to work with, slowing things down quite a bit, and at the same time, Google Frog can just start expanding if they want over to the Northeast. They can start expanding into the center. The one thing about this setup that we have from the West team is that they can a bit more easily start to take everything in the center. Once they get, if they get center control, they're, they are perfecting, they're projecting center control from both corners. Whereas, unless 400 and Google Frog can quickly sweep in from the Southwest, they aren't going to be able to deal a lot of damage, or aren't be able to maintain a lot of map control over in the center. They just only have one spot to project it from, unless Google Frog chat, or 400 builds up over here. If they build up here, okay, Sabbath Substitution has been approved. Awesome. That will simplify things. But yeah, if Google Frog or, or 400 starts building a factory in the Northeast, they could get similar results. As it stands, though, it looks like they're just going for their rating. Going for a rid of harassment, going for the Black Dawns, forcing some defensive construction, and heavily damaging the economy as well. Keeping West Team with essentially no main base metal extractors. I mean, two plus their commanders, but that's about it. That's not much, considering that East Team... They've built up thoroughly, and they are starting to build up the Northeast as well. With nice Guard Command Claves. I mean, Google Frog went through all this effort to make the Circle Guard Command. It stands to reason that they would use it extensively. For those of you not familiar, you do that by having... You hit G, and then you guard on top of a unit. And I think if you... I can't remember if Controller Alt causes them to circle constantly as they are. Rather than just staying in place. I think Alt makes them stay in place relative, and I think doing it by default will cause them to rotate around their target. And oh, apparently Chad is going on about the fact that Ichio release has not produced much in the way of new players. And I don't know. Actually, maybe it has. The thing is, though, new players are new. New players are not going to be, like, go to level skill right off the bat. Some of them might be. And we are seeing a few new players in these tournaments, like Pokedrill we never saw before. And a few other names that I have never seen. And bear in mind, I have been casting these tournaments for years. So if I haven't seen them, they probably never existed. Like I said, people can come into existence, people can cease to exist right off the bat. They can occasionally come into existence from nothing. And that's what's happened, apparently. But speaking of ceasing to exist, this bandit, as best as it tries to get, take out the gunship plant rather than going for literally anything else, not managing to actually pull that off. Probably a bit afraid of the defender wanted to keep behind the gunship plant to avoid line of sight, which is smart. But at the same time, they could have walked out and then round back and taken out some of the metal extractors and wind generators. But alas, they did not, and this wind generator maintaining a massive amount of value with two wind minimum. Holy crap. That is that is the time when you only build wind. Even in the lower hills, it's probably close to that as well. Is that be what? A Yeah, 1.1, no, totally valuable. If you're not under threat of being attacked, wind generators are awesome on this map. But anyway, speaking of projecting any force of the north. Not much has been projected. Really, it's just Google Frog's been building up, and there hasn't been a whole lot of con of contest to that. Like, really, we look here, like, there's no knowledge of this. 
absolutely no idea on the part of Monero or Sabbath that Google Talk is built up to the northwest. I'm not sure if they assume that there's something built up there for, or if they figured there wouldn't be anything there, but yeah, no knowledge that's been built up. And at the same time, it looks like a warrior drop is potentially coming up. Potentially, assuming that it manages to win, it looks like these three warriors are going to be running frontline defense, and then afterwards, going to be dropped in. That is... that's nice. I mean, we see warrior drops from time to time, especially from Google Frog. They do like the strategy. But seeing warriors used as frontliners, then used as drop... as drop fuel, that is an interesting play. Assuming that's what happens. But at this point, it looks like the warriors are just being used to push. The drop just might have been a backup, but at this point, they're not even necessary. The warrior... sorry, the warrior... I keep calling the warriors now. It's Reavers! Reavers of the rename. Reavers are managing to push in. So, it, that's the thing, is that we're dealing with a massive Reaver push. And it looks like Monero doesn't have a whole lot to stop this. The Racketeers are doing a decent job, but it's not enough. Not considering the amount of map control that Google Frog has managed to take in. Now, at the same time, again, we... Well, no, we didn't see it from Sabbath. But still, we are seeing it again. The big push coming in here, and that is going to be enough. Like, that... Yeah, so we saw them power stasis a few matches ago. But now we're seeing it from Sabbath. Hermit pushes from Spiderbot Factory is pretty well the only strategy Spiderbot Factory has for clearing open terrain. It's a good strategy, but they don't have a whole lot of support units that can come all over. I think Venoms might be able to survive, but it's kind of tricky. You have to be careful about positioning. But this is the thing I was talking about. We have the Warrior Drop, or the Reaver Drop. That's why I was calling it Warrior Drop, because it was just called Warrior Drop as a thing. We have the Reaver Drop coming in here. Four Reavers. Along with Glaive Harassment, this could very well be spell the end of Sabbath's base. And now Sabbath, of course, is putting a lot of pressure, but 400 is managing to hold this off. So if Google Frog is successful here, and it looks like all evidence points to them being successful, Recluse is not able to be built up. The Weavers are the only thing in the main base. The defenses aren't going to be able to do too much, and that is Sabbath's base dead. Some of the Hermits forced to retreat. Actually, all the Hermits forced to retreat, putting the pressure off of 400. But at this point, the positional advantage is so much in favor of Google Frog that... Really, there's not much Sabbath can do. Uh, they lost one Reaver to the, the explosion of the factory, and overall managed to... I mean, they lost a bit. It looks like Sabbath managed to get a little bit of mileage off of that attack, but really, nothing really. It's just done. So, with that, I I don't see any easy way for Monero and Sabbath to take this back, because we're seeing another Reaver drop coming in here. And that Reaver Drop is going to, again, be a nice, strong push, which will potentially get rid of... Where the heck is it? I mean, it could get rid of Monero's base, assuming it actually happens. There it is! So yeah, if that Reaver Drop gets set up into Monero's base, there is nothing to stop them. Sabbath is trying. They're going around the side. This is why you have spiders on the map like this. You can go up the cliffs. Which is not a bad idea, though I'm fairly certain it's been spot. No, it hasn't been spotted! Right, radar gets blocked, and line of sight doesn't always go over cliffs, especially cliffs that are this steep. There's nothing that can actually see this. The only option is the Charons might be able to spot it, but it looks like no. Okay, and why did they just drop their own worker to their death? That's a strange play. I mean, escaped it out of there. That's, that is the thing. We're going to manage to get that out before everything just went to hell. But even then, the Hermits... Largely dealing more damage by causing the Blast Wings to go off than anything else. The Hermits themselves aren't going to be able to do too much. But hey, it's still something. It's a nice sneaky play. Getting some revenge for Sabbath losing their base like that. But Aquanim, I'm pretty sure they have the tools to hold this off. Like the Hermit over here, it's... Is it going to burn to death? It's not! 27 HP left! Holy crap, that's actually... That could be potential damage. And at the same time, with the Racketeers coming in here stopping the Glaives as Google Frog is... I guess setting up a scouting line? I'm not really sure what they're planning to do with these glaives. Bit of an odd play there, but still at least managing something. While at the same time, we do have all, all the hermits just grabbed. I mean, if all you have is Charons, just grab the opposing forces. Maybe throw them elsewhere, throw them in the water or something. I mean, there's water around the side of the map. Or void, whichever. Or do that. I mean, that's the thing that Charons can do. You can pick up anyone's units, and you can throw them into mountainsides and smash them. You can be an eagle. But yeah, at this point, Google Frog has got full control over the northeast side of the map. I mean, the eastern team has the eastern half of the map. The western team doesn't even have southwest. 
Northwest is there, kind of, and Minato is making it difficult to attack, but mostly it was the Hermit Rush. That was the main thing that took off the pressure. But now that the Hermit Rush is done and all the workers can be brought safely back into 400's base, well, now it's just a time for possibly another rush. I mean, why not? I mean, some glaives are coming in, but again, it's not all that much. And while the glaives can't really deal with the stuff over here and can't deal with the weaver that's over here, they can still more or less deal with everything else. And even if they can't, again, the economic advantage is so hard in into east side that really all they have to do is build up the right forces and they win. If they can hold off this push, they've got this. If West can make this push work, there's a possibility, actually. But it seems a bit unlikely. Still, though, if West manages to pull this off, that could be a thing. It'd be a small thing, but it'd be a thing. Well, why not? Give it a shot. What other options do they have, really, when you think about it? So at this point, it's... Yeah, it's a defensive, a defensive setup for East. But again, they have the Western push surrounded. The West, there's no real reinforcements coming in either. And with the East team having such a massive economic advantage, I could see this becoming just, like I said, one push, and that's the last ditch. Like, the only other thing I could think of was maybe setting out the Blastings inside of 400's base, but that's not super likely. What are these? Oh, no, those aren't blast wings. That, okay, that's an imp. That is a blast wing. But the rest of these are imps. Yeah, why not throw imp bombing? Do the imp bomb! Nice! If only they had a follow-up force, and they kind of do. The glaives are coming in here. The, the knight from the back. So that is it for the last ditch attempt. And as much as I mean, the tick drop did kind of fail, it, it did take out some of the Terrans as well. But hey, there's no follow-up force for that, so it worked. In a way, in a sense. After a fashion. Wait, are there more tick drops coming in here? No. But hey, that's enough. That was enough to break it up. Got rid of the dirt bags. That's the front line force. Everything else is just a matter of saying... Wait, oh, I think... Wait, are the Terrans trying to get in the way of the racketeers? Like, block the missiles? I feel like that's what's actually happening. Like, literally body block the racketeer missiles. Because of their upward trajectory. That's kind of clever, actually. You don't see that kind of play very often, because bear in mind, Zero-K does have a full physics system. It does allow for body-blocking projectiles. But it's... But the thing is that it's still... It's still obviously going to get through a few, fair few of them. It's hard to do that, especially with fly, flying units. But hey, it's something. Like I said, though, the economic advantage is... It's still heavy in favor of East, as well as the attrition advantage. So overall, the Eastern team just... They've got this pretty well in the bag. The only thing left to do, of course, would be to get rid of this last bit of army and push in. But at the same time, Sabbath has actually managed to rebuild. Despite the early loss, they've actually managed to rebuild the spider factory fairly close to 400's base, but still 400 got a lot of pressure, so they didn't bother to go for it. And that, that of course, means they can actually get some meaningful damage in here. In theory. I mean, the economic parity, or sorry, the economic advantage is so far in favor of East. It's 2 to 1 advantage. It's going to be tough to pull back. But in theory, maybe. Like, there might be a possibility, especially with spiders being tricky and sneaky and going around the back. But then again, they've gone paranoid. Like, there's a radar in the back just to be sure. Just in case something like that happens again. Because it might happen again, in theory. And if it does, it's best to make sure it doesn't. And this, oh, wow. Locking down the factory. Can't build anything. Not going to the factory itself, just locking everything else down. Everything else is done. 400... Wait, did they go for sniper? Yes, they did. They actually went for specter weapon. Well, okay, that is it then. That is that is the end of Sabbath's base. And at the same time, there's the drop. There's the reaver drop into Monero's base I expected to have happen five minutes ago. And that should be it. That should be the game. I mean, this really was decided by the drops. Like, Google Frog going for their favorite cheese strategies and having them work out while their teammates able to support them with solid play. I mean, Google Frog and solid play too. The economy on top of the Reaver drop, it wasn't just cheese play. It was just a Reaver drop. We just don't see a whole lot of them because it's difficult to pull off. I mean, it does require your opponents... Actually, it does require your teammates cooperating, has the gunship, and a lot of that was we have 400 building gunships. Sorry, 400 building Charons. The Charons being sent over to Google Frog. Google Frog using them for the, re for the Reaver drop. And with that... Google Frog is able to just break the base from behind. 
like I said, I like the use of spiders in a similar vein. We just didn't see as much of it. It was clear that Sabbath, they really wanted to go for the frontline assault. They were thinking, oh, hey, I've got a lane leading into my opponent's base. We'll use that. It's like, no, 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 no. This isn't that kind of game. You can go around the side. You're playing spiders. Take the mountain. I'm glad they did. Didn't quite amount to as much, but I think with some coordinated play on their part with their teammate to keep defense on the top and just generally maintain strong positions so that they didn't lose their base in the first place, that could have been extremely strong and extremely devastating, tearing apart 400 the same way that 400 and Google Frog tore apart Sabbath and are tearing apart Monero. Although even then, Monero is still managing to hold off. This is still kind of a slower grind. They're not dead yet. The Rocketeers are doing a fine job making sure the Reavers don't have as much of a leeway as they would like, but even then, we have the invading construction from Google Frog, because why not? It slows things down, possibly distracts the Rocketeers. They have to the load the Lotuses, which means that, of course, the Reavers can come in, or for that matter, the Reavers can escape. Why make it a suicide mission if you don't have to? Oof. And the tick coming in, another partial success tick drop. And again, we have the Charons coming in here as a way of blocking off fire. But hey, the important thing is, can the Racketeers be blocked? And the answer is, it doesn't really matter. Because Sabbath, Sabbath throws in the towel. That is Google Frog and 400 taking another match. And Minato and Sabbath, for, formerly Minato and Trepak, now I believe at 1 and 4 when you look at the standings. And they will indeed be. So Black Dutch and Chatra also won their match. And that is going to be a match... Let's see, that was an interesting near catastrophe. So they've won theirs already. So at this point, Black Touchy and Kshatriya are tied with 400 and Google Frog. So I'm curious how that's going to go in practice, because Black Touchy and Kshatriya are... They are pretty strong. And we might have a tiebreaker between them and Google Frog and Aquanim. Be sorry, Google Frog and... Not Aquanim. Pff, Google Frog and 400. I'm thinking of Google Frog and Aquanim because years ago... Like, the first 2v2 tournament, Google Frog and Aquanim were teams. Actually, they were teams for a while. But Aquanim's organized in this tournament, so that's a little bit out of the question. But yeah, this one, Black Chichik Shatrick got their games. 400 Google Frog won theirs. And now it's just a matter of the other games. Which does mean we have... What do we have here? What do we have available? Oh, wow. A lot of games that are running for 25 minutes. So that's going to be tough to get into. Hmm. Let's see. Is it King's Empire Saniac Top Cack? Well, that might not be over. Let's check that out. Let's see what's happened in that match because, I mean, it's going to be very quick, but I am curious how that's panned out. Because, of course, that is going to be a match which is going to be very strong for that. But anyway, let's let's get going. So right off the bat, looks like similar to the last time, Gunship and Cloakie versus Spider and sorry, Spider and Jump Bot. And it looks like that's led to a more even match with the gunships being more used for locusts. And the locust rush coming in to Pyrostasis base, but in this case, both teams decided to go for the split build. They did not go for having one side entirely dominated by one team and trying to break into another. No, this is split out, but at the same time, that does mean that Top Cack is getting into a nice position to potentially take out Pyrostasis' bases. Pyrostasis doesn't have a whole lot to work with. They have a fair amount of defenses, but not a whole lot of map presence. But at the same time, though, never mind. What am I saying? The spider bot, this is exactly what I was wanting to see before. Actually, not spider. In this case, jump bot. But still, same idea. Use the cliffs. Get around the back. Taking Saniac's base down to a skeleton of its former self. So a much stronger start coming out from the West team here. And it's just a question of whether or not Pyrostasis can maintain their current position. King's Dad's doing okay enough, but... Getting a bit of a revenge kill, losing their commander actually to a bunch of sides, which that's pretty scary coming up from the top. And with that east, a bit of a storage advantage, not so much an economic advantage. It's still slightly in favor of the east team, but the question is, can that remain? And the answer is no. Pyrostasis has used this entire time to build up a massive army of hermits. Like two dozen hermits coming in here to Pyrostasis' base, along with the fleas to distract everything while the hermits get all the shots in. And that will allow for the Hermits to just rip everything to pieces, possibly destroying Top Cack's entire base. And that is going to be a massive blow. I mean, the sheer amount of time Pyrostasis was building up. Bear in mind, of course, they didn't get their own personal economy, but Kingstad still had theirs. Well, that is going down as Kingstad is losing everything. Very rapidly doing everything they can to save it, but Saniac, with their own spiders, 
managing to tear it apart with a crab. Still, though, the revenge play coming in from Pyrostasis could be a full trade. Pyrostasis has the northeast side. Pyrostasis is being forced back slightly, but still, they wiped out Topcac. Like, Topcac is gonna... They're gonna rebuild. They have some units donated to them. But the west team, I'd say, came out of that way ahead. And the sheer amount of forces available to the to the west team, mostly hermits, yes. But still, the sheer amount of forces available is still a lot. The Dante from... Okay, so Dante from Saniac still going to go down, and that's going to go down with loads of reclaim available for the for the Western team. If they can just take advantage of that, if the Western team holds, and that's becoming increasingly difficult as Pyrostasis' giant army they've been building up is starting to get a little bit crushed, especially as Pyrostasis loses their commander. Storage was already built up, so they're not doing too badly, and the economy overall is still fairly strong. But the thing is, the question is, can this mass of hermits deal with? Well, Massive Hermits. Massive Hermits coming in from Saniac's side, and it looks like Saniac might be getting... No, Saniac's losing quite heavily. Enough enough support coming in from some Venoms, enough support coming in from other stun units. Actually, Faraday, not even Venoms. Just fighting under Faraday. Fighting under turrets. Generally the way to go. At this point, that being said, Pyrostasis lost the northeast out of the map to Saniac, meaning Saniac... Actually, they could lose it again. Saniac did break it, but they didn't manage to rebuild, and that leaves the opening for Kingstad to take it, waste all that metal off of Saniac, and now with the one base for Saniac and Topcac, this being forced back by the Tritus is the only thing keeping Saniac and Topcac alive right now, as it's very clear the Western team has the majority of the map control. The question simply remains, can they make that work? Can this Hermit push win? Or not Hermit push, sorry, a Thug Law push. The Thug Law push is at least managing to get some momentum, and it is forcing the Weavers off, but the Weavers are just getting all the reclaim. That's been so huge for West. West, their economy is half reclaim. That is the thing to bear in mind. They have all the economy off the reclaim. They've taken all the crystals. They've taken a lot of the corpses that have been coming in from the Eastern team, and they've just turned that into Hermits. Loads and loads of Hermits and loads and loads of Weavers who are making even more reclaim, because of course every single Weaver has a 7.5 metal per second build rate, which means this entire group of Weavers is 67 metal per second, so Western team Whenever they get any decent reclaim, they're bumping up by about 70 metal per second. Right off the bat, and that's turned into a crow. And that crow has turned into a likely one game for the eastern side. And indeed, sorry, western side, the eastern team is throwing in the towel, or very nearly. Saniac, not quite sure that they're wanting to do so yet. It is only a 2 to 1 metal disadvantage. I mean, there's a crow on the field, so good luck with that. But, hey, it's only a 2 to 1 metal disadvantage. The crow is... I mean, it's flying death, I'll grant you. So there's not a whole lot you can do about it when it's in the game. But yeah, Topcac just not even bothering. So with that, oh wait, which? Talk to Orphelius about that, about updating branding. Because at this point, I've mostly just hidden the branding. I've changed my name from, well, no, no, I'm... Oh, I see. They're talking about what I'm talking about when I cast for Rival. Yes, that's right. I need to change up my channel. That's beside the point. I'll do that later. For now, though, we have a crow. We have a crow tearing everything to shreds. And really, at this point, it's... I'm surprised Saniac is actually holding on. I mean, they have the metal over to the northeast side of the map, but they haven't got anything else. Like, 36 to 14, that is a huge disadvantage. Aha! That's why! This giant here army... This giant army here with loads of... Okay, they don't know. <laughs> as soon as they see the recluses, they know there is nothing left. It's over. And yeah, actually, to be fair, metal used was not too far off in terms of percentage. Unit value, however, again, fairly close. Despite the fact that a lot of metal was going over to the western side, the eastern side got a lot of attrition. They were able to tear apart a bunch of those hermits and make it as even as they could considering the circumstances. But western team... Oh my goodness, that reclaim. <laughs> the sheer amount of reclaim. Over three times the amount of... Or almost three times the amount of reclaim. 17.5 compared to 6,000. Yeah, no kidding they won. I mean, the amount of... We saw that. We saw all of those weavers going around the map and grabbing crystals. Remember, each one of these crystals, they're not nothing. I mean, it's four metal each, but considering how many there are in a group of crystals, like that... How much even is that? Don't... Stop calling how much even is that? Where are the reaver? Where's the weavers? Screw it, let's start with these guys. They can reclaim. So one of these hills... That, one of these hills is about 500 metal. 
mostly due to the large crystal in the center, but still, 500 metal just on any of these hills. That's a lot, considering how quickly they were getting reclaimed. So, hey, that works. You can bear in mind, that's two, that is two hermits right there. Every one of these crystal hills, three hermits. That was three hermits right there. Every single one of those crystal hills, done. But that is going to be it, I believe, for round five. Yes, it is. That was the last match of round five. So we're moving on to round six. And very nearly to the end of the tournament. That's the second last round other than tiebreakers. So we'll just wait for those matches to get set up. And at this point, 400 Google Frog, Blood Touching, Kshatriya are tied in the lead. And I don't believe they ever... No, they do fight each other. Round seven, they actually fight each other. So if they both win their matches now... That could be the tiebreaker match just around seven to get a proper winner. We'll see when it comes, though. For now, it is going to be a short break because, well, let's. It's round six. Round six hasn't started yet. So, yeah, short break. Get to round six. Until then, I will still be here. So, I hope you will still be here. So, stay tuned.